Peachtree Group is a private equity firm that invests in commercial real estate. They've completed hundreds of transactions valued at $9 billion. For more, let's bring in CEO Greg Friedman. It's great to have you here on set with me. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Ah, oh, man. But private credit is the kind of phrase when I first heard about it a few years ago, I wasn't even sure exactly what it was trying to describe. And it felt like an area where there was a lot of pension fund money and things like that. And now all of a sudden people talk about it as if it's a common sense alternative to going to a bank, even small firms. How big has this industry become? Yeah. So this, you know, this industry has really boomed over the last, you know, really since the GFC, the great financial crisis, you know, just given the fact that, you know, banks historically have been a big part of financing commercial real estate. And as it relates to private credit for commercial real estate, you know, it wasn't as significant going back 40 years ago, but you've had this whole entire consolidation across banking, which has made private credit, you know, more impactful. But then fast forward to today, you know, private credit is, uh, you know, becoming a bigger piece just given the dislocation. But even without this dislocation, private credit really has grown like 5x over the last 12 years. Wow. So currently it's In, about a billion five, by or the excuse way, me, about 1.5 trillion. 1.5 trillion, a, yeah. a pretty big sum. Peachtree, I assume you guys are, are based in Georgia or pretty active down there. Um, one of the reasons why banks are always traditionally involved in commercial real estate is because they're the lenders, but also they know the market. You know, they're close to these sure. uh, players and all of that. Private credit, I always felt like was a step removed. Maybe that's no longer the case. How active, I mean, it's not like you have loan officers, you know, out on the streets. How do you solicit and source and place and underwrite these kinds of deals? So we, we actually do have a team of originators that are out looking for transactions. Wow. So just taking a step back, you know, we are a private equity firm. So we invest, you know, across commercial real estate assets, you know, with a large focus towards the hospitality industry. And, you know, as you mentioned, you know, we have about two and a half billion of equity under management across about six billion of assets, but we are vertically integrated. So part of our ecosystem, we have the, a lending platform called Stonehill. Hmm. And so the Stonehill team is out there originating, underwriting, asset managing, servicing all the debt investments that we're making. And that's our private credit vehicle. Yeah. And so we have the ability to go do direct loans and take advantage of what's happening in the marketplace with the, the void being left by banks. But then we also have the ability to um, pivot and actually like during the pandemic, we were one of the biggest buyers of debt from regional banks, community banks that were looking to offload wow. um, loans given their you know exposure to hospitality. You're like a, a high, you know, you're so similar to a bank in some ways, obviously you don't have the same capital requirements, but you're also similar to, you know, other kinds of investment firms. So um, do you think that this allows you to offer uh, funds at, at better rates or what? It, what is your competitive advantage in the marketplace? Simply the availability of capital or is it is it also the cost of it? Sure. So in this market that's dislocated, the, you know, the, being able to execute and have capital available is huge. Um, that's a big advantage. But more importantly, we really understand because we are, we have a 360 degree just view of the marketplace given the fact that we are vertically integrated. So we own, operate, develop, lend to commercial real estate. So we really understand the issues that different you know, ownership groups face, how, what it takes to operate assets on the commercial real estate side. And so because of that, we're able to really structure loans that are flexible and really meets you know, the needs of our customers, which are these, you know, owners of commercial real estate. Yeah. And I mean, some different examples. I mean, you've you've had, you know, loans in Mesa, Arizona, hotel conversions in Florida and Huntsville, a mobile home park, um, you know, activity near Detroit and in Troy. I mean, you've really done kind of a lot of different things. So I, I guess just tell me how you think the economy and, and um, lending is doing right now, as we're all concerned that this pullback could manifest in slower economic activity six or nine months from now. Definitely. And it's, I mean, it's obviously created within, you know, commercial real estate, you know, it's obviously created a pullback. I mean, there's less transaction volume occurring because we don't have a efficient lending environment, although it's great for us because we are filling that void and there's $1.9 trillion of just commercial real estate loans maturing between now and 2026. Um, but there's, you know, there's no question this is going to put further pressure um, because, you know, banks today, when you look at regulated banks today, they're, they've already pulled back like 75% of what they were lending compared to last year wow. to commercial real estate. And that's going to put you know, further pressure on just activity and the availability of capital. So groups like us will benefit from this, but it will definitely, um, you know, it's definitely going to impact the environment. Have you been through a down market before? I mean, in the sense that when we, we worry about uh, banks' exposure to commercial real estate because we're ultimately worried about depositors. In your firm's case, what's the contingency plan for if you lose 20 or 40 percent because some of these loans go bad? Sure. And we've been through, you know, multiple cycles. Um, so, you know, as a firm, I started my company back in 2000. 2007 before the great financial crisis. 
we've been through the pandemic, um, which we have a large exposure to the hospitality industry. True. And it was the largest hit, you know, industry. Um, so that industry was really tested through that period of time. Our, our loan book was tested and held up extremely well. So, you know, we feel very confident just based on how we underwrite, how we structure our loans and how we end up funding our loans internally. You know, we feel very, you know, we feel very much that we're protected and we don't have some of the same challenges that the banks have. Well, maybe we need to start doing a, a private credit loan officer survey so we can have a better grasp on what's really going on out there. And the Fed is certainly starting to pay more attention. Greg, thanks for your time today. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me.